Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at Oxford today. I've just arrived on 168003. I'd never been on the bit of track between Oxford Parkway and Oxford before, so I'm pleased to finally tick that bit of track off. There's also a new entrance and exit here, which I didn't know was here until today. So we've arrived here in Oxford. In today's video, we're going to literally do a bit of everything. So we're going to do a bit of old railway. We're going to do a bit of walking along the river. We're going to do a bit of canals. We're going to do some history. We're going to go and look for a ruined abbey. So it's really going to be quite a varied, um, interesting bit of everything video today. So this is the current Oxford station. It's been rebuilt many times over its life. It's not the original one. The very first station in Oxford was opened in 1844, which would have been somewhere south down there. Um, what I'm most interested in is what was here. This is where Ruley Road Station once was. Now, the station was the London and North Western Railways terminus on their line from Bletchley. So it was a terminal station, it was a listed building, it eventually became a car garage. Now as you can see it's no longer there, but it wasn't demolished, it was taken down bit by bit and rebuilt at the Buckinghamshire Railway Centre, which we have been to many times in the past and will go to again in the future. So although Oxford Ruley Road Station isn't here in Oxford anymore, it still survives not so far away. So most of what was the London North Western Railway is still open. The railway would have gone up there, so yes they've built houses on that section. Um, but the section through Oxford Parkway to Bicester, that is that original track bed. And then from Bicester through Claydon to Bletchley is in the process of being reopened. So when it reopens, we're going to go and walk along that section of track. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to head off down there into the housing estate because there's a really quite exciting relic left over from that original railway. So let's go and, ha let's go and have a look for it. So we're just walking up what would have been the track bed from Ruley Road. The main line is just along there. Now here you can see the track bed ahead of us. Down there is the sheep wash channel. Now you can't see it so well from here but we're going to walk round. There's a very unusual bridge. So the engineer Thomas Brassy, he didn't have enough spoil to put the track at a higher level on an embankment. So what he did in order to get across the sheep wash channel he built this rather unusual swing bridge. So the swing bridge, as you can see, is still here, although the track bed either side has been built on. So that bridge would have swung around and trains could have gone over the Sheep Wash Channel. So Sheep Wash Channel, it's not a long bit of waterway. It runs from the River Thames over there, which we're going to go and see. And um, just behind that van up there is the Oxford Canal. So I think that's a really fascinating relic of, um, you know, of former railway times. I remember as a child there wasn't a fence around it and I, I remember going in there once and I found the handle and I was turning the handle hoping I might actually swing the bridge but I realised it had been disconnected. But just look at it, it's always a train as well, cross country voyager. Cross country voyages. I wonder if anyone on the train looked out for. Oh, there's an interesting swing bridge there. So you can see the base of the swing bridge down there. So it's a bit like a railway turntable, but obviously on a different, doesn't turn right round, it just turns, you know, um, so the trains could have crossed the canal. So when we get to here, you can see an overgrown pier of the bridge. That's it, look, see that handle there? I was trying to turn that as a child once and I thought I might make the whole bridge swing, but I you know, realised afterwards it had been disconnected. You can see the other pier of the bridge just there. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna follow round this footpath here, get another view of the swing bridge. So now we're down at track level. So you can see the other railway, how much higher it was. It was higher enough to bridge the track at a sufficient height for boats to pass under. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go under the railway, which really is still quite low. I'm actually having to duck down to go under here. Um, so we're just following the sheep wash channel on the railway. This bridge is slightly higher, this final one. So we're coming up to here and that bridge you can see in the distance that is the bridge 
um, where the River Thames connects with the Sheep Wash Channel. And this little river here, this is known as the Fiddler Stream, so this flows into the Sheep Wash Channel, and then there we have the River Thames just over there. So what I'm going to do in today's video, we're going to walk up the River Thames, it's up towards Godstow Nunnery. We will see more of the Fiddler's Stream later on, and um, we're just really going to explore the other side of Oxford. So we're not going to go into the city centre where, you know, all the tourists go. I'm going to show you what else there is to see, the more rural side of Oxford. So here's the River Thames, looking quite a lot smaller than what most people are perhaps used to seeing of the Thames, because we are that much further upstream. And then there's the railway bridge we just come under. So we're going to go up the Thames now and um, up towards Godstone Nunnery. But it does seem strange though, just seeing the Thames, you know, everyone thinks that this really big river, you know, where it goes through London and uh, Buckinghamshire, Berkshire, but up here, you know, it's this nice smaller river. I mean, all of the Thames is nice, but it's just we're just not used to seeing it, you know, at, at its smaller stages. It's probably the furthest north I've been along the Thames. One day I'll have to, well, I know I'll keep saying it, I'll do the Thames path, so then we'll see it right from source to estuary, but um, you know, I'll have to try and explore some of the other towns further north up the Thames. Now, back there where we were at the Sheep Wash Channel, I showed you the Fiddler's um, Stream. Well, this is where the Fiddler's Stream comes off the River Thames, and then it becomes the small stream down there. So we're going to go over this concrete bridge here, and the area ahead of us is known as Fiddler's Island. So we're going to be on an island in the middle of the Thames for um, well, not for long, for a couple of minutes, and then the Thames path goes on to the other side of the river. So we will then keep following up on up north. So I'm not going to go over, this bridge would take us back to the other side, and you could walk back to Oxford. If you wanted to do this as a shorter walk to what I'm doing, you could come along the Thames, you could go over this bridge and back down there, you'll soon get back to Oxford. See, we are officially on the Thames path. So I'm not doing that today. Um, I have a different route back to Oxford planned. I'm going to take you across Fiddler's Island. There's um, a bridge up here known as the Medley Bridge, and it's just coming in to view up here. It's um, quite an exciting looking bridge, so um, we're just walking. On the other side of Fiddler's Island, you've got um, Marina. The railway line is over there. Now, the camera isn't going to pick it out, but can just see a load of containers moving along. So there's obviously a container train heading north. That's a nice boat, look at that one there. So we're coming up towards the Medley Bridge, which is, um, they say it's like the rainbow shaped bridge. It's a lattice bridge, but, well, rainbow shaped, I suppose. So we're following Fiddler's Island. I see one of the churches over there in Oxford. Well, I said you could now, there's all these bushes. You can just see. Or is it over there? Yeah, there's a church spire over in Oxford city centre. And uh, so the Oxford Canal and the railway in the Thames, they all head north along this, what I suppose is a floodplain. I expect it probably does flood along here. So here we are, I'm going to let you see the medley. So once we get onto the other side, Thames Path is then on this side of the river, we're going to keep following it till we get to Godstone Nunnery, Godstone Abbey, but we'll talk more about that when we get there. So we've now reached the end of Fiddler's Island, can't go a lot further. Now let's go over the Medley Bridge, and there you get a view over the floodplains north of Oxford. So we, we're going to keep going right to where those houses are, right the way up there. That's that's the plan on today's video. We're just coming along here, so there's the, the Medley Bridge behind us. I know it's a bit in the trees. I'm going to now keep following the Thames path up here for another mile or so. So we just walked past Godstow Lock. This section of the Thames here, this is a man-made 
Cut, built in 1780. The original Thames flows off over there, it's now known as the Wolfcote Stream. We'll go and have a look at that a bit later. The lock back there though is called Godstow Lock, which is named after Godstow Abbey or Godstow Nunnery, which is remains of it are just here. So this is a Benedictine nunnery. It was founded by Edinburgh of Winchester in around 1115. There's not a lot of it left other than this chapel here. They've rebuilt the external walls. I believe the main church would have been just over there somewhere and there'd have been the cloisters in here. But what we'll do, um, we're going to go inside what we can see of it, this small chapel, and, and have a look. If you look over there across the field, that's Godstow Lock. You can just see the lock keeper's cottage. So let's go and have a look in the in the um, in the chapel, and then after that we'll go and find the original, what I believe is the original course of the Thames, the Wolfcote Stream. We're going to go into the village of Wolfcote. We're going to go and find the site of its very short-lived railway station, and then um, we'll finish up on the Oxford Canal. But more of that when we get there. So come round here. Is there, yes, there's a gateway in into the monastery here. So I'm not sure what of this is original or what of this has been gradually rebuilt. So we come into this big space here. You see it's really just a big empty space. I believe the cloisters would have been in the middle somewhere. So there'd have been a tower over there, the church would have been over there, and then this is the chapel. I think the chapter house might have been somewhere along there. I'm just sort of trying to visualise you know, the whole place as a ruined abbey. So I may have if I'd come here when it was still an abbey before the dissolution. I think it was in about 1539, I think it was dissolved. I'll probably be walking along the edge of a cloister now. But let's go and have a look in the um, tallest surviving bit of masonry of the abbey. Always enjoyed something ruined buildings. So, coming up. Okay, right. Well, Start with the negative. Not very nice seeing all this rubbish. I really wish people wouldn't. You know, why leave rubbish in a historic site like this? I think that's a real, real shame. Those sort of people, they shouldn't be allowed to come into the countryside. But if we pretend the rubbish isn't there, let's just have a look at the architecture. So you can see, looking down to the window, smaller window up there. And um, interestingly, where we came in, that must have been, there must have also been another floor up there. So you can see where the wooden um, Joyce would have been in the wall. But yeah, why do people have to leave rubbish here? You know, there's no excuse anyway. Yeah, you can see clearly a door up there. So I'll let you see that view with no rubbish off the, off the chapel. So um, now we're going to come out here. I'm going to go across there and we're going to go and find the original course of the Thames. So we're now just leaving Godstow Nunnery behind us. We're going to come out, we're going to cross the Thames. Now, I've just realised back there, uh, what I said about the new cut and the original cut, um, I said the, the old river might be now the Wolfcote Stream. I've realised I don't think I'm correct there. This is the new cut here, no mistaking that. When you're looking up there. There's another bridge here. I think that's the original cut. And when they put the lock in, they built this cut across here. The lock is just round the corner, um, and Godstow Nunnery Abbey is over there. So we're now coming onto this island. There's some rather nice abandoned-looking gates there. It's just private keep out. Um, but if we come along here, when, so we're now on the island. There's a pub just here. So uh, here we are, the pub. It's called the Trout. So I think. This is the original course of the River Thames here. To me, that would make more sense. But if anyone wants to comment and confirm, you know, please do. And then on this side, you can't see a lot, but you can see the two rivers through the trees do join up again. So um, I'd love to walk over that bridge, but I don't know if you can. Uh, so yeah, we are now back onto this side of the Thames. I'm gonna walk through the village of Wolfco and um, we're going to go and look for the old station and the uh, canal. So I'm going to carry on walking up this way for a little bit. I'm now just a little bit further along Godstow Road. Now, 
I said about the Wolfcote Mill Stream um, earlier, so we're just coming up here. This is the bridge over the Wolfcote Mill Stream, so it flows into the River Thames just up there. So where I walk was right the way down there. So this is the Wolfcote Mill Stream. Let's have a look on this side. Oh, that's nice, nice little garden down there. It's a really nice place. I'm going to continue on down here towards Wolfcote Station, so we can walk through Wolfcote Village and soon we'll be at the site of the very short-lived railway station. Let's finish with another view over the river. Well, here we are at Wolvercote Common. We've walked through Wolvercote Village. That's Wolvercote Common all the way over there. The River Thames flows right along there. And here's the railway line. So that's obviously looking towards Oxford city centre so this is the main line there's two goods loops whether the camera's picking it out but there is a container train sitting up there it's heading in that direction if it was heading this way i might have waited to see it come along now if we look over that side of the road bridge just down there that's where wolvercote platform would have been now the gwr had a habit of calling certain stations platforms so they were a bit more important than the halt but not as important as a fully flung station so there's just been two little platforms with little um pagoda waiting rooms a bit like we've you've got denim golf if you have a look at this video on screen now you can see what i mean um there have just been two of them but it was very short-lived it opened in 1908 and then it closed in 1915. we're not going to go there today but just over here um a bit further on there was the london and northwestern railway which we talked about went into Ruley Road, they also had Wolvercote Holt on their line. So there were two, Wolver, Wolvercote Platform, Wolvercote Holt, very, very close to each other. Um, and now they're both closed. Almost makes you think now, I wonder if, if there was a Holt or a station at Wolvercote, would it be used? Because Wolvercote, although it's sort of a village, it's a bit of a sort of suburb of Oxford. So you never know. Um, my plan now, though, is, as you can see, here we found the Oxford Canal. And there's the road bridge on the Oxford Canal there. So my plan is to go down onto the Oxford Canal and that's the way I'm going to walk back to Oxford and um, that will pretty much conclude this video. Although that said, it looks like getting to it is going to be easier said than done. I think I should have walked. I wanted to show you the view over Wolvercote Common. So I went on this bridge, but it looks like I've got to come all the way down here to go all the way back down there to get onto the canal. But I do want to finish the video on the canal. So oh look, British Waterways, Oxford Canal Walk. So let's, let's go and find that canal. Interesting that there's these traffic lights for the two bridges over the railway and canal. They look like they were temporary, but they're very permanent temporary lights. So let's go get down onto that canal. And then that will be my route back to Oxford. So I think when I get back to Oxford Station, I would have probably done about a six-mile walk. It's been a very pleasant six-mile walk, and it's been a very flat six-mile walk. In fact, I'd say coming over this bridge has probably been the steepest gradient I've encountered on the whole walk. So this walk is literally as flat as a pancake, but it's been a really enjoyable walk. So, you know, why not come on a train to Oxford and do this walk for yourself? So let's go down these steps... Oh, and uh, there's a lock as well, so it's even more interesting. So just coming down here, and we find a lock on the Oxford Canal. So it says 45 minutes to Oxford. Not sure if that's on a, on a foot or by walking, but that's looking up the canal. Here's the very small lock. This is Wolvercote Lock. We're going to go through here under the bridge and then I will continue my walk on back towards Oxford. So just let you see the lock. Bridge 235. So, oh, by the way, that's where we were a moment ago, up there. So from down on the Oxford Canal, I hope you enjoyed this video. And as I said, why not come here and do this walk for yourself? And um, it's, you know, really pleasant walk. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.